it's a pretty big box for a light price. Now this is all looking like great value for money, but is the phone still good or have they sacrificed too much to bring down the price point? Let's find out. First, they ditched AMOLED display for an LCD display. But when I started using the phone, I felt the CE2 Lite has the finest and the most good looking LCD displays in this segment. It looks really rich, colorful and more importantly, more natural than I expected. It's also ample bright outdoors. And even under the harshest of sunlight, you're not going to have any troubles viewing the screen. It's got a 6.59 inch display with a relatively tall look and that looks really good when you keep it horizontal to watch stuff. It's got a refresh rate of 120Hz and this UI, it feels so well optimized where you can really feel just how smooth 120Hz can be. And in fact, despite being at the lower end of the price segment, this feels smooth enough for me to say that the experience is very close to a flagship experience. There are two downsides though. Unlike the Nord CE2, there is no Gorilla Glass 5 protection and this does not support HDR10+. But even then, streaming videos, movies, TV shows, they all look super despite the non-HDR angle to it. And while gaming too, all of it looks great. And thanks to the GPU, I could maximize the graphic quality to max while gaming for best experience. Now, there are a few design issues that I do want to talk about. While it's got a headphone jack, a large display, expandable storage, a massive 5000 mAh battery and a splash resistant body, there are a few misses. First of all, it's a bit too tall and that makes the weight distribution uneven. It doesn't feel as rested and stable in my hand when I hold it. And you couple that with the edges that are so slim, it doesn't make for a good grip. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's very appropriately thick, but they slim down the edges where you hold the phone and that makes it a bit uncomfortable in the hand. The other issue was with the camera bump. It does interfere when you're generally holding the phone and something that you'll need to get used to over time. The back material also feels like a very obvious plastic and hence a bit cheap. Of course, on the good side, it keeps the device weight quite light, it doesn't let it get hot and it's in general more scratch and fingerprint resistant. However, if you slap on the case that comes with the phone, it sort of takes care of all of these issues. So these are real issues to worry about if you do plan to use the phone without the case. If you're going to use the case, then none of this matters. Now, one of the things I really like is that they integrated the fingerprint sensor with the power button and there's a nice dent around the area to allow you to place your thumb comfortably and unlock. And anyway, it's faster and more secure than your regular in-display optical fingerprint sensors. Now, I did say that this is splash resistant, but do note, it's not IP67 certified for water and dust resistance, which means if you damage this because of, you know, liquid damage, OnePlus is not going to cover that under warranty. Now, as I use the phone a bit more, there's one thing that I really started to miss, and that was stereo speakers. I mean, this is a really good phone for watching videos given, you know, the gorgeous display and for playing games given the processor. But then the speaker output kind of downgrades the experience a bit. Of course, it's not an issue if you've got your wireless earphones on, but otherwise, it did bother me a bit. And one more thing, there's no alert slider on this OnePlus, just FYI. Anyway, let's move into performance now. The CE2 Lite is powered by the Snapdragon 695, which is the most widely used performance chip in this price segment. What's even better is how well it is optimized for performance with Oxygen OS. Just interacting with the phone, its UI and launching apps, it feels so smooth. Like if someone just gave this phone to me and asked me to use it without telling me what price band it's from, I'll really confuse it with a powerful mid-ranger or even a base flagship. I set Call of Duty graphics to max and the gameplay was still very smooth. I played the online multiplayer for almost an hour and there was no lag in performance, no slowdown in gameplay, consistent connectivity and the phone also did not get hot, not even significantly warm. Even while playing Asphalt 9, it was a breeze. Despite being a fast paced game, I faced absolutely no hiccups. And playing games that support 120Hz refresh rate are even more fun to play. I tested Chameleon Run and Dead Trigger 2 and both of them played fantastically well. So clearly, whether it's, you know, everyday use or for gaming, everything was top notch and it was really hard to find something to complain about. So what's the catch? Well, let's talk about camera. So the camera setup is quite straightforward, but not without disappointments. 
Firstly, it does not have an ultra wide lens and secondly, it does not shoot videos beyond full HD resolution at 30 FPS. I mean, I can deal with the full HD 30 FPS video recording, but I really can't digest not having an ultra wide lens in 2022. But regardless, here are a few photo samples for you. In the camera app, you get integrated Google Lens like you do with all OnePlus phones. There's also scene detection, HDR capability, and the ability to toggle to 64 megapixel mode. In the portrait mode, you can define the blur strength by tapping here and then setting the aperture. And here are some additional modes that you can use on this phone. The pro mode allows you to change ISO, shutter, exposure, white balance, and focus. Coming to the software experience, it's standard Oxygen OS stuff. If you're familiar with it, there are no surprises to talk about. This is running Android 12, so you get dynamic color theming across all apps, including the keyboard. The interface is crazy smooth, as I talked about earlier. And I was really blown away by just how well optimized the interactions are. I mean, the initial experience is so close to any base flagship that you might use. It's really that good. I'm really not going to talk much about the OS here, but if you guys have any specific questions, just comment below and I'll surely respond. And lastly, battery. So it's got a massive 5000 mAh battery capacity. Sure, there's 6000 and 7000, but those are very rare. So 5000 mAh is one of the more common massive battery capacities. And on this phone, it's easily a day and a half. But let me share the stats with you. But practically speaking, you're not going to be watching Netflix, you know, every day for three hours or gaming for two hours every day. So trust me when I say this, you can actually squeeze out more hours than the screen on time I just showed you. And that equates to almost a day and a half of phone use in a single charge. That's impressive. All right, conclusion, and I want to keep it very crisp. If you're looking for a performance phone geared either towards gaming or everyday use with super smooth user experience and a fabulous display, probably one of the best phones in this segment. It may not be a good looking phone, but that should not be an issue because you can slap on any case and make it look like whatever you want it to. However, if your priority is camera, that's when you should be looking at some other phones in this price segment. I mean, lack of an ultra wide lens, lack of 60 FPS full HD video recording and below average low light photos could be a deal breaker for some of you, if not all. But really it's the combination of optimized experience in terms of performance, that display, and that battery is pretty unbeatable in this price segment and those are the reasons you should get this phone for. All right, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions about the Nord CE2 Lite, let me know in the comments section and I'll surely answer them. I'll see you guys in the next one.